Kudos to Porsche. Tesla have been working on this technology now for quite a number of years, and they even showed some pictures of this tech. I'm talking wireless charging in operation. But Teslas don't have this feature yet. Mercedes-Benz, I've heard they're working on it. Porsche, though, have just revealed this technology in their new EV. It will be able to wirelessly charge. And I know this doesn't sound like a big deal. I mean, why not just plug it in? But actually, plugging it in can be a bit of a pain in the butt, especially when you've got multiple EVs at home. It's not a big deal, I agree, but I think that this would be awesome and definitely a benefit versus plugging in. Sometimes you'll find with different EVs, they can get stuck and the car forgets that it's locked to the car. And I've had this experience quite a few times with different models of cars when I'm testing them. Not having to worry about it being stuck would be awesome. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I just drove a Porsche Macan for a couple of thousand kilometers, the Macan Turbo. Ridiculous name, calling it a turbo. I've got no idea the genius behind that decision. But phenomenal car. I'm talking literal supercar that looks like a mid-sized SUV. But, uh, you know, Porsche's sales have been going down in key markets like China. Um, it's just the perception, I think, is that their cars are great, but there just isn't enough differentiation between a, a expensive premium Porsche and other car, other electric cars that are quite a bit cheaper. Don't get me wrong, they are impressive, but um, in some ways, such as software, there's probably a little bit behind. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Now, Porsche will launch a wireless electric car charging pad next year alongside its first model to support the new tech. It's going to be the fourth generation Cayenne large SUV. So the Porsche Cayenne, I think it's going to be, uh, from what I'm hearing, going to have a lot of range. We're talking about, I think, around 800 kilometers of range I've been hearing, and very fast charging as well. I, I believe 450 kilowatt charging, plus wireless charging. Now, can it charge at 450 kilowatt wirelessly? No, absolutely not. But having a wireless charging EV does kind of future-proof you. I mean, there's this... There's certain roads being built around the world in different locations, different cities that are wire, can wirelessly charge a car, particularly in places, I think they're, they work in places where there's just tons of traffic, where cars are just stationary, sitting there, traffic lights just sitting there all the time. These are the kind of places where that would make sense. Porsche is claiming a maximum charging power of 11 kilowatt AC. That's actually quite good. And... Porsche, they've revealed the efficiency of the system. 90%, they say, are up to 90% efficiency of energy transfer from the power grid to the battery. So it sounds like you're, you're losing approximately 10% in the transfer. To be honest, this blows my mind. I think that efficiency is remarkable for wireless charging. I'm going to guess that in the future, the efficiency levels will continue to get better. But to begin with at 90%, I just think, wow, it's amazing. Anyway... Without knowing the battery size of the new Porsche Cayenne, we can't tell how long a full wireless charge would take. But yeah, it's going to be slower than the 320 kilowatt charging you can get on Porsche's other EVs. Of course, it's a lot slower, 11 kilowatt. But the point is you do this at home, right? Or I don't know, maybe at a hotel. I think that's a, a good location to have this technology. It's going to take a long time for this to catch on, though, if it ever does, to be honest, wireless charging, just because... Places are already set up for non-wireless. But I think this would be great because sometimes when you plug your car in, there's problems with the cables, uh, there's problems with connectivity, there's problems with not being the right ch charging cable for your car. If, every, if we had wireless charging pads all over the place and every car could charge wirelessly, which eventually they will be able to, or most of them, you would think, 
that would eliminate some of that com those compatibility issues. And the cables not being long enough, having to try and park your car in a different direction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The wireless charging pad also would make it more convenient to charge at home, where 75% of Porsche EVs are recharged according to the brand. And it can be installed in a garage, carport, or open air space. Measuring 1,170 millimeters long, so about 1.2 meters long, and 780 millimeters wide, it's also 60 millimeters tall. So it's, yeah, it's about six centimeters above the ground. It weighs 50 kilograms. And those are the dimensions of the charging pad. It easily slips under a compatible EV or any, well, to be honest, any car, regardless of powertrain. Of course, it's only going to work on an electric vehicle. But the point is that um, it's, not, it's not so big that only some cars can drive over the top of it. Similar to a smartphone, the wireless charging pad will only work on vehicles with the appropriate hardware. And of course, the first production model ever from Porsche is the 2026 Cayenne. And the truth is that there's really not any other EVs that have this tech yet. So what that means is if you're already a Porsche owner, if you own a Taycan or a Macan EV, you can't actually use it. I'm going to guess the new Taycan and the new Macan in the future will have this tech as well. But yeah, the current models don't have it. The hardware required to make use of wireless charging is fitted between the two front wheels and is weather and stone chip protected, say Porsche. And when the Cayenne detects the presence of the charging unit, it lowers itself to initiate the process. So that's a part of the problem here. It lowers itself to initiate the process. It sounds like you actually need air suspension to make it work with Porsche's system. And for that reason, when I learned that, when I discovered that part of it, I went, ah, oh, what a bummer, that's disappointing. It's wireless, but kind of not wireless. Lining up the Cayenne to the charging pad, they say is made easier by a new surround view monitor perspective. And Porsche has also built in safeguards. So if it detects movement or a foreign object within its charging field, the process stops. But the fact you've got to line it up and then get your rest suspension to connect it, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a button in the Porsche to get it to lower, but still you've got to line it up. Kind of makes me think, uh, maybe it's just easier to use a charging cable. The unit is also equipped with Wi-Fi and always online connectivity options, enabling software updates and connection to my Porsche smartphone applications for monitoring. Buyers of the Cayenne EV will still have access to DC fast charging of 400 kilowatt, the fastest of any production Porsche so far. Interestingly, this does provide Porsche with some differentiation that I mentioned earlier they don't really have. There's plenty of other EVs out there that are super powerful, super fast. This, though, does give them that point of difference. So it could be kind of a cool thing. You know, what's the reason to own uh, an expensive car? Sometimes it can be stuff like this where you go, hey, check this out. Or you just drive into the garage and it starts charging and it provides you with that kind of convenience that you pay. You pay, well, a lot extra for in this case, I'm going to assume. But what do you guys think? Is this going to take off? Will wireless EV charging eventually be the future? I believe it will be, but it's going to take a long time. I think it's going to take probably 10 years before it becomes mainstream, but I do believe it will actually happen en masse. The only challenge is going to be the whole needing to lower the car towards the charging pad. I'm going to guess the tech will improve and eventually that won't be necessary. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.